In this fourth section of the Mental Status Examination Training, we will learn about motor movement. My name is Tom Field, and I produced and narrated this training series. Let's return to the overview. In this training series, we will learn via a scaffolding process. In this section of the training, we will learn about motor movement, and during guided practice activities, we will review affect and mood, thought process, and memory. At the conclusion of the eight sections, there's an end of training test. I encourage you to follow the handout as we progress. You can use scrap paper for guided practice if you'd like. There's also a handout available for this. And as you view the video case studies during guided, guided practice activities, there's going to be occasions when a section of the mental status examination is not fully evident. And in those instances, it's okay to indicate unable to assess. The definition of motor is the level of energy in body mechanics and movement. We will mostly be learning about the motor spectrum in this section of the training, while also looking at an odd or eccentric movement known as stereotypy. Not covered in this training, but also important to know, are odd or eccentric tick-like movements common to Tourette syndrome. These include clearing the throat repeatedly, licking the lips repeatedly, rolling the shoulder repeatedly, scrunching the nose repeatedly, and sucking or protruding the tongue repeatedly. These are involuntary movements. The latter, the protruding the tongue, is also an associated symptom of tardive dyskinesia, an unfortunate condition that can sometimes develop in people who take neuroleptic or antipsychotic medication for a prolonged period of time and they develop involuntary tongue movements. Not covered in this training, but also important to know, is apathetic. This is defined as indifference, a laissez-faire attitude accompanied by lack of motor impetus and dulled emotional tone. Which this is a associated symptom of depression, brain injury, and also antisocial behavior and conduct problems and in the media is popularly attributed to adolescence. Here is the motor spectrum. In the middle is relaxed, normal, typical movement, and at the ends of the spectrum are the more extremes. At one end is the deactivating range, this is on the left side, and on the other end is the activating range on the right side. If we look at the left side, the deactivating range, you'll notice that relaxed or normal becomes psychomotor retardation, also known as hypoactive mood movement, and apathetic fits in here. And then one step beyond that is catatonic or catatonia. And as we progress, the degree of deactivation becomes more severe. Looking to the right side of the spectrum, beginning with relaxed or normal and progressing to agitated, you'll notice that relaxed or normal becomes restless or hyperactive, which is a more, more activation in motor movement, and eventually becomes agitated, and this is again the more extreme end of the motor spectrum. As we go through this training, we'll begin with relaxed and normal, and move towards the left side of the spectrum, before eventually returning to the right side of the spectrum. So let's look at motor movement. Relaxed or normal motor movement is described as being within the typical range of motor movement. Let's watch an example. I asked my neighbor to turn the music down and I think he's a very reasonable guy because he walks the neighbor's dog and then I asked him to make a compromise, and he did. I asked him to turn the music down from 10 at night until 9 in the morning, and he did that. This client has a relaxed posture. They move their head from side to side. They maintain good eye contact with the interviewer. They also raise their eyebrows at times for emphasis. And this degree of relaxed motor movement um, is known as you know, a normal degree of motor movement. Psychomotor retardation or hypoactive 
motor movement is described as decreased activity, a slowed response to the environment and sluggishness. This can be associated with depression and also brain injury. So I've been thinking about calling my daughter, but well I, well, I haven't talked with her for about a year, and I just really miss her. This client is slow to respond. There's a lack of eye contact. And while they're kind of staring off, you do see their eye move slightly from one side to another. So they don't have a fixed stare, uh, but also their mouth muscles move very slowly. And it's this slowed response to the environment, this decreased level of motor activity that is known as psychomotor retardation or hypoactive motor movement. Catatonic motor movement is even more severe. This is described as severe immobility, often associated with schizophrenia. Let's watch an example. This client doesn't move aside from breathing. We can hear them inhale and exhale, but otherwise they stare in a fixed manner into the distance and there is no motor movement. And that complete lack of motor movement is known as catatonic or catatonia. Restless or hyperactive motor movement is described as a compelling need to be in constant movement these individuals find it difficult to sit still. This can be a symptom of anxiety, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or trauma. You know, I'm not really sure if I want to get a, get a new job. It's kind of scary. I haven't worked for a long time. And um, uh, last job I had didn't really go that well because I had a, uh, I didn't get along with somebody at, the, at work. And, um, so I don't know. I've been given a lot of thought, but I don't. I don't think that it's going to be. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a good thing to be done right away. Anyway, I'm not really sure. This client rocks slightly throughout the video clip. They seem to be constantly fidgeting with their face, and they also seem to be fairly anxious. And this compelling need to be in constant movement and difficulty in sitting still is an example of restlessness or hyperactivity. Agitated mov motor movement is a more extreme or severe um, activation of motor movement. It's described as severe anxiety and or irritation. It can precipitate anger outbursts or panic attacks and pacing or hyperventilation can occur. Let's watch an example. This client hyperventilates, seems upset, grasps her hair, then places her hand to her mouth in rapid succession and seems ready for action. This readiness for action, by the way, is often associated with the adrenaline response. And the severe anxiety or irritation that this client presents with is known as agitated motor movement. Stereotypy is described as continuous mechanical repetition of speech or physical activity, such as flapping hands and rocking. It is often an associated symptom of autism spectrum disorders. Let's watch an example. Elephant pasta, 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 elephant pasta. 
The client's repetitive motor movement, the hand flapping, is also joined with the verbal repetition of elephant pasta. This is known as stereotopy, which is the continuous mechanical repetition of speech or physical activity. It's now time for guided practice for you to try your hand at coding motor movement. In the following guided practice videos, you're going to code for affect, mood, thought process, memory and consciousness, and motor movement. For motor, you will code either normal or relaxed, hypoactive or psychomotor retardation. You could code apathetic, or you could also code catatonic for the deactivating range of the spectrum. For the activating range, you could code hyperactive or restless and agitated. And then odd or eccentric motor movement is coded as stereotopy. Let's watch the first video. Yeah, um, yeah, I didn't, I, I just didn't go to work this, this week at all. Um, it was, it was just too, too much, you know, I just, I just, I just rather to just stay at home and just stay in bed and, you know, it's just, it just gets, it just takes too much energy to, to just be around people. And it's just better to, to just be by myself. Pause the video now and assess the cl client for affect, mood, thought process, memory and consciousness, and motor movement. This client's affect is blunted or flat. Despite their obvious vegetative symptoms, they d discuss wanting to stay in bed, indicating a depressed mood, it's hard to fully gather what their mood is based on their expressed emotion. So we'd indicate blunted and flat, and then depressed with vegetative symptoms. Their thought process seems fairly logical. In terms of their memory, we could indicate intact, uh, if you believe there's enough information for that, otherwise you'd indicate unable to assess. And in terms of memory, you would indicate hypoactive or psychomotor retardation because of their slow response. Let's watch the next video. So how are things going today for you? Okay, I guess. I know that You've had a lot on your mind, on your plate in the last few days. Um, it seems like you're pretty focused on something. I'm wondering what's on your mind. Uh, not much. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, thought process, memory and consciousness, and motor movement. This client has a very flat affect. Because of the just the flatness of their affect, it's hard to know what their mood is, and so we'd indicate unable to assess for mood. They seem preoccupied in terms of their thought process, because despite the interviewer's questions, they still seem very focused internally. It's difficult to know exactly what their memory state is, if they have an intact memory or not, so we'd indicate unable to assess memory. And we'd indicate that they seem more catatonic here than dissociation, mostly because in dissociation someone um, would snap out of the tr trance when the interviewer asked the question, whereas it, with catatonia the person does not fully sn snap out of the trance. Let's watch the next video case study.
pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, thought process, memory, consciousness, and motor movement. This client has a full and congruent affect. They do seem to be dysphoric and irritable, and that is clearly evident in their expressed emotion. In terms of their thought process, it's very difficult to know. Are they ruminating, for example? Are they preoccupied? We don't know, so we'd indicate unable to assess the thought process. We don't know the degree to which um, they have an intact memory, so we would indicate unable to assess for memory. And in terms of their motor movement, I think you could make a case for either restless or for agitated here. I think I would probably code restless, mostly because I don't think the client seems um, to be prepared for action, as you might find with agitation. They seem almost impatient to me. Um, whereas someone who is agitated might, might seem like um, they might act on their agitation at any time. And so I think I would code restless, but I think you could also code agitated. So let's review. Today we learnt about the motor spectrum. This included normal or relaxed motor movement, psychomotor retardation or hypoactive movement, catatonic motor movement, restless or hyperactive motor movement, agitated motor movement. We also learned about odd or eccentric motor movement, um, especially stereotypy. And we also briefly examined apathetic motor movement. This concludes the fourth section of the mental status examination training.